All right, we should be live. Microphone looks good. Window capture is working. All right, we're back. We're working on Indoraptor. We are almost done. We got them down below 120 cards. So we have. We only have to cut a little less than half the remaining cards, and we'll be all done. Can't see me sarcastically giving the two thumbs up, but that's where I'm at right now. Okay. It's fine. We will have him done most likely by pre-release weekend at this rate. Probably even a couple days before we can start in on whichever commander I'm going to pick. I have no idea which one I'm going to pick, but there are like half a dozen interesting ones, so... We will build a commander deck around one of the um, murders at Karlov Manor commanders, definitely. Uh, possibly more than one. I don't think we will ever top um, March of the Machines because we had the early spoilers for that set had like three cards I wanted to build around immediately. Like it was Jenga Taxis. Um, Heliod, and there was at least one other one on the list, and I was like, I want to build commander decks around all these. Oh, it was like Omnath, like five-color Omnath. <laughs> it's just like, I want to build commander decks around all of these cards. These cards are great. Every one of them makes me want to build a very different deck than things I've already built so far. So, so yeah, um... I want to do at least one. We're going to get all of the Fallout cards, and I'm sure I'll build at least one deck around a Fallout card because I build around whatever commander is the most interesting thing from the new products, but I do expect to build it. Like, I'm going to build one, obviously, but if we have time before we get caught up in the spoiler season for whatever the Cowboy set is and nothing super interesting comes out in the early previews for it, then we will probably build, like, two or even three commander decks around um, Karlov Manor. There have to be enough ones. I forget which ones, like, it's hard to remember because they're all kind of jumbled together, but between the commander products and the actual um, legends in the set, there were plenty of things that had build around potential when I saw them, so <clears throat> I'll figure it out. I'll pick somebody. We'll make a cool deck. But first we gotta make a cool deck for Indoraptor. Yeah, if I wasn't trying to get it done before the pre-release, I would probably actually have built two decks around Indoraptor. One where I use the um Pinging creatures and the Thornbite staff and everything to poke Indoraptor to trigger him more often, and one where I um, focus more on the board damaging effects, like the, where we're going right now with the Pyrohemia Pestilence type deal. So, but because I don't feel like I have enough time for that, and I want to get to Karlov Manor. <clears throat> We're going to focus on this build. Yeah, I was thinking that yesterday as I'm cutting like all of the pingers. <clears throat> we could have very easily built two different decks to take advantage of uh, Indoraptor's effect. Brave Robber, Tribe Elder. Detsku, Coal Hauler. You just have to cut roughly half these cards and we'll be good. Yeah, without the um, Hingers, I think Basilisk Collar. <clears throat> we can gain a ton of life from Indoraptor, but that's about it. Like, I don't need Indoraptor to be Death Touch at all. So. I would rather use the spear so that I can target things and kill things that are indestructible so that they don't have them left back to sacrifice when Indoraptor gets too out of hand. Let's 
still okay with Rakdos. Although he's less <clears throat> essential, I think, now. Probably still keeping him. Yeah, I've cut a lot of the uh, big X burn spells and whatnot because I cut all of the treasure makers. So the fact that my things get a big discount from Rakdos might not be as important. <clears throat> Excuse me, as it normally is. Probably still worth running, though. Tunneling GFP. It might be time to cut Tunneling Geopede. I keep thinking about cutting it, like, every time I go past it, and it's like, it's so cheap to deal a few extra points of damage that I don't want to cut it. Like, once it's in play, we can pretty consistently deal two damage to each opponent. On the turn, we want to cast Indoraptor. We have fetch lands. We have land ramping. <clears throat> we have things like Oracle of Moldaya. Like, we should be able to play two lands in a turn and get that, like, four to six damage off. But <clears throat> Depending on how many opponents we have. But that being said... It's a three man a three two that does a couple points of damage and then dies, so <clears throat> Yeah, we're keeping the Ferocidons. There was a lot of back and forth in my brain about whether or not we should keep them, but ultimately I think the fact that we can ping them like four times per turn with pestilence and um What's its name? Arahemia. That we should be able to make this thing problematic for the opponents. Like, it might actually be one of the most problematic um, enraged creatures for our opponents. If it's not the one raptor from the commander deck that whenever our dinosaurs are dealt damage, deals that much damage to any target that's not a dinosaur. Got an inheritance, spawn of mayhem, casualties of war, murderous rider, Conrad. Conrad might still go. Black is our tertiary color, and he is the most black intense card outside of pestilence. But pestilence, like when we can cast it, that means we have two black mana sources we can rely on usually. Like, it's not going to be a temporary source of black mana that got it into play, because we don't have any of those anymore. I don't think, like, all of our stuff should be, like, ramping into land, so we have access to the colors of mana that we have, you know, as opposed to sacrificing treasure to do everything. Yeah, I can see it being Conrad. The problem with Conrad is that normally he's going to give us a few points of damage in place of, you know, creatures getting blocked and dying and not getting through for damage against the opponent, so Conrad's trying to make up for that. But we don't have enough throwaway creatures for that to really be a thing. So Conrad's less likely. Like, we basically need our opponents to be in a position where they have to chump block. Like, they have a couple of 1-1 creatures, and we're attacking with a 5-5. Five five. So instead of taking the 5 damage, they block, and then we deal 1 to each of our opponents, so we get, like, 2-3 to three damage there. Like, that's how Conrad is helping us. So... Really want to keep Torolf. We want to keep unnatural growth. Ill tempered loner with blasphemous act is fine. Blasphemous act and star of extinction and the pyrohemia and the pestilence. Yeah. Kind of want to keep all of the um, not quite, but close enough um, 
what's its name, uh, Boros Reckoner variants. Yeah, we might not have access to the red-white hybrid ones like Boros Reckoner and Spite Mare, but we have the mono-red ones, and that should be good enough. Although, I think we do want to cut um, Mog Maniac for a Brash Taunter. We're going to make that swap. That's why I haven't pulled Mog Maniac off the list, because it's the same card count since we're trading one for one. I don't want to cut the Hammer Skull. It's too much power for too little mana early on, so I'd rather keep it. Huh. I'm looking at Hammer Skull, and now I'm thinking we have Sad Robot on the list, but Sad Robot's a 2-2. I wonder if we want, like, Topiary Stomper instead. Topiary Stomper's a dinosaur, right? So... It would even help for... That's what made me think of it, is that it's like a plant dinosaur. Yeah. Good old three mana, four, four. Like, it is a little bit worse in that it can attack or block in the early stages, but... We are ramping with land, so it shouldn't be that hard to get to seven. Consistently, and it's one mana less than the... Um, sad robot, so I think we do make that trade also. Four Storm Surge, Chandra's Ignition, Fiery Emancipation, Terror of the Peaks, Silvala. <sighs> yeah, I probably still want Silvala if I can keep her like if i decide i still have room for her, i want to keep her because that is an awful lot of mana that she taps for in this deck especially if indoraptor is actually out then she taps for a ton of mana hydra omnivore you want to keep that whole one player is vulnerable all players take eight damage is a bit too good for Indoraptor. Might cut the Siege Behemoth at this point. It's an okay finisher, though, is the problem. So is Pathbreaker Ibex, though, and Ibex combos with all my other stuff, including just making Indoraptor larger. Hmm. It's tempting. We gotta get rid of half these cards, roughly, though. That is the biggest problem, is I gotta figure out how I'm getting rid of half of these cards and still having what I need. <sighs> Maybe we don't need Ravenous T-Rex. Yeah, I can see cutting the Ravenous T-Rex. She's decent, but not amazing. And I have a lot of other good big creatures. It does help when she attacks and deals, you know, 12 damage to a thing or 18 damage to a thing. And then the excess damage gets doubled or tripled to the opponent. Yeah, it's not quite good enough. I can also see cutting Blanca. We, we're down to like four, um, four or five fight cards that can target Blanca, so don't really need that. If anything, uh, Blanca should go before the T-Rex. The T-Rex still has a lot of potential in this deck. All right, I kind of want to keep the T-Rex, but we're still going to wind up cutting her eventually, I think because I don't have room, but maybe I keep her over one of the other mid-sized creatures. <clears throat> but yeah, I think we're good to cut Blanca, so one, two, three, four. 
Brings us down to 112. So 52 more cuts, and we're good to go. All right. Monic Tutor, Pestilence, Soul Ring. All of those are basically locked in. Nature's Lore, Vampiric Tutor. I can see cutting the Animate Dead. I can see cutting the Reanimate. They're both strong in the deck, though, so I don't want to, but I'm running out of things that I can't, you know, eventually we have to cut things, so. <clears throat> oh, right, I also have Unearth still on the list, and that one can only get back the Indoraptor, because I was originally planning on just killing off the Indoraptor and getting it back as a larger creature, <clears throat> so maybe that's not really worthwhile anymore yeah i've glossed over this like so many times i think in my head every time i saw it it was just reanimate again <clears throat> and i forgot that i had seen it earlier on the list yeah sad robot gets tagged out for topiary but for the same reason as the mog maniac versus brash taunter i think i just leave it on here for right now and then make the swap later <clears throat> I'm wondering if I cut Grave Robber. So Grave Robber and Scavenging Ooze both have the problem of they are very vulnerable to um, other things that I'm doing, making it harder for them to be good graveyard hate cards. So... And I think out of the two of them, Scavenging Ooze has the better chance of living long enough to do its thing, whereas Grave Robber is always going to get killed the first time I Pestilence or Pyrohemia or something. Ultimatum, Gaia, Chain Reaction, want to keep the indestructible equipment that's already on the list if anything i kind of wish i could get more of it on here but i do not have the room <sighs> xenagos is only one creature but that power doubling effect with the other cards that i have that care about such things just it's so hard to cut xenagos at that point also, the times where he's just randomly a 6-5 indestructible, because I happen to get to 7 uh, devotion. Maybe Savage Vent Maw is too underwhelming. I do appreciate the extra mana, but it's a 6-mana 4-power flyer, so... I feel like a lot of the time that's just gonna not do anything significant anyway i do like the extra mana i do wish we could make room for it i also would not mind the one dragon from forgotten realms commander but i need to make cuts and i think it's one of the weaker cards still on the list so I kind of want to keep those dinosaurs, but that means for every one of them that I'm keeping, I've got to cut something else. Maybe Suncrowned Hunters isn't good enough? That is an awful lot of damage to opponents, though. Like, it can only take three damage before dying, but if I ping it once, like if I can ping it three times, uh, and it deals nine damage to each opponent... It is still one of the weaker dinosaurs on the list, but I want to keep it, so we're going to for a little while longer. Maybe I have to cut another fight card or two, like only have like a couple of them just to... The fight cards are fun for triggering Indoraptor because we get to have it get dealt damage, but if we cut the fight cards and just relied on normal removal and then we can cut... Um... 
the jumpstart guy, whose name I can't think of off the top of my head, and that would actually clear out a bunch of cards. Like, it's fun, the idea of having Indoraptor fight things, but we're going to deal damage to Indoraptor anyway. We don't need him to fight, so maybe the fight cards are just uh, not good enough. I'm starting to think that they aren't, so maybe we just come down here and get rid of all of them. Here, we already cut Blanca from this list, so that's gone. Conrad's gone. Geopede's gone. I forget if Thrashing Wumpus is gone. I think he is, because he dies too readily to my other things being in play. So yeah, if we cut all of the fight cards. So we have one, two, three, four. Yeah, that frees up five card spaces in our deck. So. A curse. Like, they all work well enough in the deck. It's a bit of a shame to cut them, but... An Animus. And Savage Punch. Alright, so... Curse of the Werefox. Go take them all out off of the main list. So Curse is gone, and Fury is gone. Tail Swipe. Animus. I wonder if Ancient would have gotten me there faster. At first I was thinking there's got to be something else with Ancient, but... Uh, we did cut Savage Vent Maw off of the ramp thing, but that's not the one I wanted. Savage Lands, nope. Savage Punch, found it. Yeah, okay. Alright, so real quick, if we copy this, that's nine things on the list, so we cut eight cards. So that brings us down to 104. Almost under 100. All right, we can go get the jumpstart guy too. Death. Yeah, now that we're not fighting, we do get to draw a card if my creature becomes blocked, but... That's about it. He also doubles power, which was tempting. Yeah, we've got other power doublers. And you can only double a creature's power once per turn, and only at the beginning of combat, so... Although most of them are at the beginning of combat. I still think Xenagos is better, giving haste, so... Like, Naeth is fine, but I need cuts anyway, and I'm cutting a bunch of the cards that made me want to play with him in the first place, so... I think we're good to cut Naeth. Alright, so let's get Naeth off the list. And... Alright, so 43 more cuts. Yeah, I'm not really liking Ravenous T Rex's chances. I don't need the animate dead or the reanimate. Like, I'm not setting it up, so this is basically just, oh, my thing has died, I get it back cheaply, and I get to probably attack with it still. But we're not doing anything to set it up, so... Our opponents are just exiling our stuff. These are dead cards. Elkite, Grim Monolith, 
Flame Rift, Fires of Yavamaya, Arena, Judas Violence, Lightning Greaves, Sad Robot, who we want to tag out, Adama's Reach, Sakura Tribe Elder, Sensei's Top, Heartless Adetsuku, Coal Hauler Swine, Farseek, Pyrohemia, Still kind of want to keep Wound Reflection, just the one, like the actual Wound Reflection. A Violent Ultimatum. Chain Reaction. Dark Steel Plate into the core. Peace Within, Orabrask. Blasphemous Act, Olivia. Yeah, I'm going a bit too fast. I'm processing each one of these cards because that's how i glossed over like unearth before um is that i just saw it and my brain went no that's reanimate <clears throat> that's what that is it's a cheap reanimation spell actos lord of riots burnished heart xenagos arc bond tarka's command Yeah, Tarkus Command still stays. Like, I was considering it because we have, like, the Price of Progress and um, Acidic Soil, but I still think I want a Tarkus Command Flame Rift. If we can keep all of those in here, maybe, like, maybe it's Flame Rift that goes, or maybe it's, like, Price of Progress does so much more damage than... Um, a lot of the other ones do. Uh, but there's going to be, like, one player at the table who's just like, nah, I got, like, almost entirely basics. I'm like a monocolored deck or something. <laughs> so I have, like, ten basic lands in the entire deck, or ten non-basic lands, rather, in the entire deck. <sighs> I mean, most of the time, even the monocolored decks, we should be able to hit them for, like, you know four damage or something. I'm just worried we're taking way more damage than we need to from those, but at the same time, they're capable of dealing way more damage to the opponents, so I kind of want them to set up Indoraptor. Like, I don't mind taking, you know, eight damage from my own thing if I've dealt, you know, 24 damage combined among the opponents, so... I guess I mind it a little more if I'm only dealing 16, but that's because we only have two opponents, so it still shouldn't be that much of a thing. But yeah, if I'm dealing that much damage to everybody... Oh, I missed Savage Stomp. Oh, great. I don't know if I missed Savage Stomp down in the lower section now. Maybe I did. Like, if I missed it while collecting all of the fight cards. But now I don't know if the count's accurate. And we're getting close to the part where I need to know how accurate the count is. I need to know exactly how many more cards I need to knock off this list. Yeah, we probably just cut the Shadow Spear. It is nice to take away Hexproof and Indestructible, but it's not essential. Like, it only takes it away from creatures, I believe. I believe it only takes it away from creatures. Shadow Spear, do you... Is it permanents or creatures that lose... Oh, is Shadow Spear one word? Yeah, there it is. Um, permanence. It does take it away from permanence. Mm. That makes it a tiny bit more tempting for... Um, although I suppose I still need to worry about uh, Shroud on some of the things that protect, like artifacts and enchantments, so maybe that's still not quite good enough.
Yeah, okay, we'll drop the Shadow Spear. <sighs> Do we cut Fable? Fable's decent, but both the token that it makes and the Fable itself are little creatures with utility, so they're at huge risk of dying. <sighs> Fable, like, Flip Fable, Kiki Jiki, is just such a huge amount of potential damage, though. And in the meantime, it's not actually vulnerable to creature kill. Like, I might kill the token that it made, but... I don't, like, I can wipe the board of stuff, flip over this, play another creature, and have it all work out, potentially. It's just one of those cards that has so much raw power to it and potential that I kind of want to keep it. But we've got a bunch of other cards that were just raw power. I don't know if I need this one. <sighs> Leave it on the list for right now, but I do think it's one of the ones that's going to get potentially cut. Warren Clex, I'm still way too amused at the idea that I'm going to just punch everything with the Indoraptor. Fall of Care Andros, I'm really trying to keep casting one of the huge sweepers and just having you know a 20 plus power army is a very real thing that can happen with this card so roaming throne for dinosaurs all port nexus to double power and to make like a huge token when my things die this is another one where we can wipe the board and wind up with this giant, like, fungus dinosaur token, so. Is it Warstorm Surge? Is it, um, the Terror, for that matter? Uh, Terror of the Peaks. I like both of them. They're both very good in the deck. I really don't want to cut either of them. I do think they should still be in the deck, but... I'm looking for things to cut, and I'm running out of options. Omnivore... Actually, I've been glossing over things now that I'm thinking, like, before I was going through card by card and going, what is this and why is it still in the deck in my head? Because I think I gloss over things too much as I'm reading through them, and my brain starts wandering as I'm considering, like, what this card is actually doing and I'm not paying close enough attention to the other cards. All right, so I think Savage Stomp was the card. No way it was before that because I didn't really focus on the Heb. A Tarka's Command is probably the last time I really focused on what this card was and why it was in the deck. So, Neheb, extra mana, post-combat. Uh, Ranging Raptors gets me land. Ripjaw draws me cards. Star is one of my mass damage spells. Suncrown Hunter gives me extra damage against opponents. Holly Raptor keeps making creatures to replace the ones that are dying. Silverclad Ferocidons is making them sacrifice things constantly. Trophy's one of my removal spells, but Devil's a removal spell. Alright, Ill-Gotten Inheritance is 4 mana for 1 damage to each opponent on my upkeep. So once I make the investment, it's there, but it's only 1 damage per opponent. Same with Spawn of Mayhem, and that's dealing one damage to me, but it also is a Flying Trampler. I really want both of these to still be in the deck. Like, once I make the investment, that's, like I said, I untap, I deal, like, two to three damage to our opponents, so that's two to three extra counters on Indoraptor for no mana investment. Very similar to the Geopede, but it's guaranteed damage every turn, 
So even if I don't have a land to make landfall with, I'm getting this damage. But it's also fixed. Like, it was way easier to do, like, two to three triggers on Geopede in a turn. Like, it's impossible to do that with either of these two. So the trade-off is one of them's giving me life, the other one is a 4-4 four, four flying trample for four. Yeah, the plus one, plus one counter shouldn't matter. Like, if I'm down to ten or less after taking the point of damage from Spawn of Mayhem, then the game should be over at that point, one way or the other. Like... I don't think it getting the counter is going to matter like 99.9% .9 of the time. Casualties of War is one of my favorite removal spells. Uh, Ilharg. We have a lot of high casting cost stuff and a bunch of ways to give haste. So Ilharg is like potentially very mana efficient at dealing a ton of damage. We spend 5 mana on Ilharg, we might be able to deal like. 10 or somewhere in like the 10 to 15 range with it uh just from putting other creatures into play actually i don't think we have a nine power creature but we definitely have some like sevens and eights that we could put in right we have an eight we might not have an eight that might be that might be a thing i have in my head <clears throat> we definitely have some sixes and sevens though we have like the seven four i can assign damage and we have a bunch of like six power creatures still, or we should. So yeah, Ilzark definitely represents like ten plus damage by itself, and that's not counting, you know, the like War Storm Surge and Terror of the Peaks getting extra damage and all of that. So yeah, there's a lot with Ilharg we can do. Uh, Murderous Rider is one of our removal spells. Great Henge is A, very cheap to cast, and B, one of our card draw spells. It also gives us extra mana, extra life, and makes our creatures bigger, so. Really want to hang on to that one. Tectonic Giant. So, every time it attacks or an opponent targets it, I get to either deal three to everybody, which is the primary reason it's in here. I also can impulse draw the top card of my deck until the end of my next turn. Or until my next end of, sorry, until my next end of turn. So if I do it during the turn it attacks, I have that turn to cast it. But if it gets targeted on another player's turn, I have until my next end of turn to cast it, so... That one's a little on the weak side compared to everything else, and we did cut the other giant that cares about giants that helped it get on the list. But it's mostly on the list for its own merit of being able to attack for its own three damage plus three damage to each opponent. Like, that's very tempting to keep it around. Because that, if we can actually connect, that is, again, like nine to 12 damage depending on the number of opponents we have, so. Because I'm assuming that if it attacks, it has a safe attack or a reasonable chance of living and or getting through for damage anyway, so. And even if it dies, it's still like six to nine damage dealt for Indoraptor, so. Leyline Tyrant lets me hoard my red mana and is a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flyer. So, the baseline of 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flyer is probably too weak. Letting me hoard my red mana until I need it, though, so I can do, like, one big thing. Although we have cut a lot of the things that require tons of mana to work because I don't have, like, the treasures anymore. So I was worried about uh, mana... Um, consumption, and so I cut a bunch of the things that would require me having tons of mana. Also, we don't have ways to sacrifice it to basically use it as a burn spell for its one trigger, so... 
it is close enough, I think, right now, but I am looking for cuts, so it might wind up not making it all the way through. Torolf is just insane with damage doublers. Like, as soon as that starts happening and that becomes a thing, the biggest problem is that Torolf might die to some of my damage dealing sources, but we should have more than enough ways to actually kill our opponents if Torolf's in play with a damage tripler or doubler. Most of them triple now, I think, because we cut so many of the minor ones that I think it's only the major ones that are still on the list. But yeah, dealing excess non-combat damage. Just tore off in play with Blasphemous Act and Star of Extinction and the other ones like Chain Reaction just does so much damage. So, I'm very disinclined to cut him. Portality Spear is removal. Natural growth as one of the ways to double my creatures up. Yeah, you're right, little blue line. That's supposed to be plural possessive. Uh, Ill-tempered loner is one of the I get dealt da or he gets dealt damage. He deals that much damage. But also, if we ever flip him into the werewolf side before dealing the damage. Like, just passing the turn and then activating um, Pyrohemia and Pestilence and whatnot on opponent's turns while he's flipped over. Yeah, Fable, I already went over why I want to keep it, but I can see not keeping it because of that. Like, just because it's not essential to the deck. Terra Sunder is one of my removal spells. Zopin Drill is our other power doubler, so we have like three of those left. In this one, Unnatural Growth and Xenagos. I guess since Zopin Drill, um, since my other creatures might randomly die to my mass damage effects, it's not unreasonable to activate Zopin Drill to give it indestructible but I don't see that happening very often. City on Fire deals triple damage and has Convoke. The Convoke is not a huge deal, but it might let me get it down for, like, instead of eight mana, like, seven or six. That's not nothing. Also, it's the other damage tripler in the deck, so... Not like we have a ton of those to choose from where I can cherry pick like more cost efficient ones. I just want to do the Vorinclex thing. The, this is the card that I might wind up cutting because there's absolutely no other cuts to make. But I'm going to be impossibly sad when this one goes because I just want to get to that third chapter and have Indoraptor gain indestructible and start punching everything. Just melee the entire table until everybody's dead. Ball of Carandros, just absolutely titanic token. After a board wipe, too, so. Mithril Code is one of our ways to give the things indestructible. Their triumphs removal. Pugnacious has a huge chance of getting cut just because all it is is a big dumb creature. Like, jokes aside, it does have the minor drawback of... If I don't have another dinosaur, also it's not I have to ha not have the other dinosaur in play when it attacks. So even though Indoraptor is always there, I really want to attack with this before casting Indoraptor. Like I want it to get in for the six damage first, and that means it might get locked down for that turn. But three mana to deal six damage is an awful lot on a creature, and. I do have enough cheap dinosaurs where it might just be able to attack and not get locked down, like, with some amount of consistency. Like, a lot of our creatures are dinosaurs. We want Roaming Throne because we have so many Enraged Triggers, I just want to copy that. Skullport and Nexus can double up our creature's power. Also, when our things die, we get a big angry dinosaur out of it, so. 
anything other than, you know, mass exile or bounce means that our creatures dying still leaves me with a giant body that they have to deal with. So I like it as an insurance policy and as a way to make Indoraptor a lot more dangerous. Three visits is one of our ramp spells. Warstorm Surge. We went over it before, but it and Tyrant can be cut, but I think I'm losing too much extra damage by doing that. It is one of the weakest cards on the list in that I have to spend six mana and it doesn't do anything until I do something else. So a six mana do nothing enchantment is really... Like, maybe I cut it and leave Terror in, because Terror is at least itself a 5-power flyer for 5. So it's less mana, and it's also a creature that can deal damage, but that means it's also a creature that can die, and then I won't have, you know, Warstorm Surge, if somebody rats the board and I have Surge out and I cast another creature, I get all that extra damage in... Ignition is another one of my mass damage spells. I have to double check. Maybe Ignition can go because we have Blasphemous Act, Star of Extinction, Chain Reaction, and maybe like one other. So maybe I don't need all of these. Maybe. Fire Emancipation is our other damage tripler. Air of the Peaks. So Vala is just a ton of mana. Like, most of our creatures have very high power. So it's not unreasonable for Sylvala to come down and be able to tap for, like... Like, she costs three. If I cast her and cast, like, Topiary Stomper or um, Pugnacious Hammer Skull or something, like, her tapping for effectively three to five mana on turn four is something she could very realistically do. Um, even if she's only tapping for an extra mana or two, though, that might still be good enough in the early game, and then later when I need mana to cast, like, a bunch of spells and still get Indoraptor back down. Assuming she's still alive, but, you know, a lot of these things are assuming my creatures are still alive when they might not be. Speaking of which, an Archimancer. Good when I need to cast a damage dealing spell or creature with haste and then Indoraptor in the same turn, because that's functionally two mana in almost all cases. And if I can cast a third spell because of that, like if I'm actually saving three mana a turn, that's a pretty good rate for my two mana spell. I mean, at that point, it's another Grim Monolith. I could still see cutting it. It's cheap, but it's also very vulnerable to our stuff. Like, the same problem that I'm having with um, Fable the Mirror Breaker is that it's such a small creature that it's very easily going to get swept away in all of my other stuff going on, but... I don't think that's a good enough reason in and of itself to cut it. The Sent into Avernus ramps me and deals damage to my opponents. It also ramps them, and it deals damage to me, so that's a trade-off, but... It is a lot of damage, especially since it's cumulative. Like, first time we deal them two, but next turn we deal them four and so on. So even though we're giving them mana to work with, we're also giving ourselves mana to work with, and we're dealing a ton of damage, and we can cast the Indoraptor in the same turn. Like, once this thing has, like, four to six counters on it, I don't need to actually do anything else in that turn besides cast Indoraptor. You know, if it has six counters on it, that's literally 12 to 18 damage. So that's a 15 to 21 power Indoraptor, so. Maybe we don't need, so we can probably cut Necromantic Selection. That's been hiding on this list for a while now. And since we're, A, not generating as much mana as we were, and B, um, 
we have a bunch of other board wiping effects for creatures specifically. So probably go ahead and cut Necromantic. Omnivore is a ton of damage to each player. Like one player is vulnerable, the entire table takes eight damage, so. I do think I want to keep that. Scavenging uses our graveyard hate card. We'll probably run um one of the lands also. Um either uh scavenging ground or um Bojuka Bog, maybe both. That way I have enough graveyard hate. Siege Behemoth makes it impossible to block our creatures. Like they're still blocked and they might still die in combat, but they will deal a ton of damage to the opponents. Uh, Pathbreaker is a huge power and toughness boost, especially with all the other things boosting its power. Also, it doesn't even have to boost its power. It can boost, like, any... Whatever my strongest thing is, that's what Ibex base is off of, so... But yes, if the Ibex is somehow my strongest creature, I have so many things that can, like, double up its power. That that's a huge... Um... I was about to say huge power boost, but it felt redundant saying power that many times. But yeah, it's a huge power boost to our creatures and trample. It might still be one of the cuts. Siege Behemoth might still be one of the cuts. They're both good at what they do, but not essential to the deck. But that's kind of where I'm at with things like Warstorm Surge, too. It's like, it's good at what it does, but is it essential to the deck? Uh, Conqueror's Flail lets me potentially set up where our opponents can't interact with our stuff, and we can have, like, one really strong turn. Also, it's a power and toughness boost um, to the creatures that care about that, especially. So, Indoraptor, Ibex, all of them. All of them. All of them are good. Like, anything that Anytime I'm dealing extra damage, but mostly it's that I can have a really strong turn where they have to interact with the creature about to pick up the flail. Otherwise, they can't interact at all with my turn. I mean, it's, they can't cast spells, so they can interact with activated abilities and whatnot, but it takes away a lot of the potential for interaction. It might still be a cut, but I'm definitely trying to have a big turn with this deck. So I'd like to keep it if we can. Uh, Judgment is one of our better removal spells. We have a bunch of other enraged creatures, but Altasaur is hilarious. Maybe it's not good enough, though. So Vrondris is like a bad um, polyraptor. Like every time it gel gets dealt damage, we get a 5-4. Uh, but the 5-4 dies if it ever deals damage to anything, so... It's possible we can cut Vrondris. Also, his dice rolling thing is back out again because we cut the dragon. Fiendlash... Adds to power, but also when we deal damage to the creature, it deals damage equal to its power to a player or planeswalker. That lets uh, Indoraptor bypass the whole you can sacrifice a creature thing. Also, it lets me choose. Also, it lets me, you know, target one person with this and possibly have him randomly target somebody else. So now that player is like. The one player is taking the damage definitely, and the other player has to decide if they're losing a creature, and it might still happen again, so. Or if it randomly picks the same player, now they have to sacrifice creatures if they can, otherwise they're taking double Indoraptor's power, and that should be enough. So I really like Fiend Lash. I would love to keep that one in. I think that's my favorite equipment on the list right now. Uh, Uncivil Unrest is either going to be Rhythm of the Wild or it's going to pair with Rhythm of the Wild, depending on if we can make room or not. Wrathful Raptors, again, we're dealing so much damage to our stuff. And that is an awful, like, 
If I deal one damage, but I have like three dinosaurs out, that gets out of hand very quickly. Uh, blood for the blood god. It might be more funny than good, honestly. I keep coming back to that one as being, like, it's very entertaining, the idea of dealing eight damage to each of our opponents for only uh, three mana. But I don't think that's actually going to happen as often as I would like it to. Sorry, blood. Uh, Donna turns all of our creatures that are bonded with her into ill-tempered loner, so... Definitely down for her. Creeping Bloodsucker is one of the cheapest deal one damage to each of my opponent's effects we can get at only two mana. So, would like to keep that. Mana Crypt. Uh, Fiendish Duo. One of our other damage doublers. And only doubles to opponents, so I don't have to worry about killing my own creatures, including the duo with it while it's in play. Indoraptors, our commander, and Ravenous T-Rex. All right, so we're at the hour mark just about, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six more cards cut. All right, I managed to justify to myself everything's presence on the list, except for a few cards, so we're probably going to wind up cutting some combination of them first. But then we have to figure out what other 37 cards need to go. But we're getting there. We cut almost um, 30 cards off of the list, I think. We were just below 120, and now we're at 97. So we cut like 20-some-odd cards off this list today. So I think that's pretty good progress. We only need to do that two more times, and we'll be done. All right, so that's going to do it for me for today. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.